Good morning. Welcome to the Sandwich Federated Church. I am Lori Walker, and by the grace of God, uh, I am serving as your temporary pastor. So, just to let you know, next week I will not be here. I will be at the baptism uh, of my new grandson. So we're excited about that. And you will be here and you'll be celebrating communion. Uh, remember, uh, next week is communion. And the Reverend Eric Heinekamp will be here. He is the executive presbyter. Actually, we call him the transformational general presbyter and stated clerk uh, of Blackhawk Presbytery. So good luck to the elder that introduces him with that long title. Um, so... I'm sure you will enjoy him. I have always enjoyed when I've had the opportunity to hear him preach. And good for you to have the connection uh, to the rest of Blackhawk Presbytery through him. Um, I made a mistake in the bulletin. Our last song today will be I Will Wait For You on Not Take My Life. That was last week. So, And we're looking forward to recording. Some of you have volunteered, so we'll start to have quite a few different change-ups here with special music. So thanks to all of you who have volunteered. Uh, we look forward to that. So now, let us indeed be called to worship. Our call to worship this morning, at the name of, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We come together to worship with one voice, one heart, and one spirit. We are the people of God. Let our worship today bring glory to God. Um, I'm going to tell you this but for the opening prayer. Usually I pray from my heart when I'm up here. And last week I had a couple of notes, and this week I have just been struggling. I have stressors like you do, and I'm so tired of... COVID and the world and politics, and I just felt heavy-hearted all week, and I just thought, you know, how am I going to pull everybody together in prayer here this morning? So cover your ears. I got out my Methodist hymnal. You didn't see that. And I found a song in here, and it just made me feel good. So I'm going to use this song as our opening prayer this morning, so if you'll bow your head. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble everywhere? We should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who with all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise and forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield thee. Wilt thou find a solace there? Amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, 
how wise it is to turn to a hymnal and aren't we thankful for the gift of music to lift our spirits so I think that's what we need to do during the week turn off the television and turn on our Christian music the Lord spoke to us through Ezekiel saying turn from your sins while there is yet time put them behind you and receive a new heart and a new spirit. Therefore, this morning, let us confess our sins before God and f- before one another. I will provide voice as I ask you to follow along our prayer for confession. Almighty God, we have been wandering in the wilderness of sin. We have complained in the face of your mercy. We have been selfish and conceited in the face of your sacrifice. We have not done your will. Teach us humility. Teach us gratitude. Infuse your spirit into our beings so that we might be reconciled to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, how sweet it is to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. No, you are forgiven. Enjoy God's peace. Enjoy his forgiveness. And now share it with your neighbors I'm going to go ahead and take some new pictures because more of you arrived that will look, you know, much better. So turn around, wave, do all of that good stuff. All right, good, good. And, uh... We speak now to those are that are joining us online, uh, children, through you, uh, and to those children that now perhaps you are partly responsible for their schooling and training as well. You know, I think we've done a good job of teaching our children pride, right? Pride is like, it's a good thing when children feel good about themselves, And I must tell you, I fall to it, too. I heard this week, my daughter-in-law said, oh, you know, telling me my grandson was the star student for the day. And, you know, that little pride thing came in, you know, and then she said, oh, well, everyone (laughs) gets a turn at being the star student. And I thought, oh, that's good. That's good. So do we teach our children indeed to 
have also humility. To be happy for the, whoever it is that is that star student. Not to always think they need to be, or that they need to run and be first in line, push others aside so they can be first, but to practice humility, making sure indeed that everyone has a chance to be that star student, that we enjoy the gifts and talents of every student and every friend that we have in school. So indeed, let us praise God and thank him for the gift of humility that we might rejoice in each other's joys. In Jesus' name, amen. Our prayer for illumination. O oh God, fill us with your spirit and humble our hearts so that we can hear your word. Amen. Um, the Old Testament reading this morning is from Ezekiel again, 18, 23, 24, 30 through 32. Do you think that I like to see wicked people die, says the Sovereign Lord? Of course not. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. However, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things and act like sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die for their sins. Therefore, I will judge each of you, O people of Israel, according to your actions, says the Sovereign Lord. Repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O people of Israel? I don't want you to die, says the Sovereign Lord. Turn back and live. And now it's your opportunity to stand for our New Testament reading. We read again from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, 
giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. This ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us bow our head. Oh, dear Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of your word. We pray, Lord, now by the power of the Holy Spirit that we might hear your message for our lives this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So for those of you keeping up with the reading through the Bible here, those of you that are, I would say, plowing through the reading of Ezekiel, through all the judgment and vivid images of destruction and despair, Today's reading provides and offers you some encouragement. Right when you think that God is just totally focused on death and destruction, Ezekiel quotes God. Do you think that I like to see wicked people die? Of course not. I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. This is what Ezekiel's audience needed to hear. This is what we need to hear. That God's purpose, his desire, is to save us. And he's reminding us that we have a choice. And God is trying to move us, to make us, help us choose, indeed, life. God is speaking through Ezekiel He's trying to save us. He is just thinking of us when he says, Repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die? I don't want you to die. Turn back and live. So what sins do you think indeed are destroying the people? What sins are destroying us? I propose one, the root of many sins, and that is pride. You see, pride is the root of many sins. It is repeated frequently in Ezekiel. We find in Ezekiel 7.10, the people's wickedness and pride have blossomed to full flower. In Ezekiel 16, Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness, while the poor and needy suffered outside her door. Ezekiel 28, your heart was filled with pride. Ezekiel 30, the pride of her power will end. Ezekiel 32, will shatter the pride of Egypt. And Ezekiel 33, I will completely destroy the land and demolish her pride. Indeed, pride that is self-serving, arrogant, that brings on conceit, is a sin against God's nature. You see, God, our Old Testament God, he is not self-serving. He is thinking of us. God with us and God for us. And in the New Testament, Jesus is with us and for us. They say the freedom from pride is humility. The freedom from pride. Paul's letter to the Philippians, he follows up with what it means to live a life worthy of the gospel by saying, you must have the same attitude as Jesus Christ had. An attitude of humility. We are called to be humble, to act and live in humility. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Now, for first century 
people living in the Mediterranean world, this indeed was radical. You see, they understood the whole love thing, that love is superior than hate. They agreed with that. They even agreed in the idea of harmony, that it was better than fighting. But this humility thing, that took it too far. You see, they viewed humility as a weakness, not as a virtue. But if we're honest, humility is a radical way for us to think too. I mean, okay, we know we should be humble, right? And I don't like this, and it's always me up here confessing. But, you know, I'm humble on occasion. Aren't you humble on occasion? I mean, if we know there's someone else in the room that is smarter and more talented, then, okay, be humble, right? Or if we're going to compete, good time to be humble because you may lose. So, yeah, we, I, we're humble on occasion, but not all the time. We have moments of humility, but really, mm, aren't we coming from an attitude of pride? Jesus, on the other hand, he knew there was no one smarter in the room. He knew there wasn't anyone more talented. He knew he could always win. But yet he was humble all the time. He had an attitude of humility. So my question is, why was he humble? Why did he act out of humility? Why did he humble himself to the point that he would associate with people beneath him? You know, those tax collectors and the women and the beggars and the lepers. And why did he humble himself to wash his disciples' feet, even those of his betrayer, Judas? And why, why did he agree to carry, to humble himself and carry his own cross? And why did he accept crucifixion, the punishment for criminals, a humiliating death? He was innocent. Why did he accept it? It's because indeed Jesus has the nature of God. And God has always had the nature of humility. The nature of thinking of others first. Think about it. All God's acts, all his blessings, his delights in creating all of it was for others. He gave us laws and prophets. He gave us Ezekiel. All is a part of his plan to save us. He made covenants trying to enter into relationship with us. And he sent his son to save us. You see, humility is thinking of others before yourself. God, as our Father, as fathers do, has always thought of us first. And so has Christ, our brother. Unfortunately, I don't know that we can say the same. We live in a world and in a culture that promotes pride. Indeed, I think the foundation of our culture is pride. Individualism, self-interest, ambition. How do we change our attitude to one of humility? We follow Christ's example. It said in our reading that Christ gave up his divine privileges and took the humble position of slave. I like the way it's translated in the New Revised Standard Version. It says, he emptied himself. Emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. We are called to empty ourselves for the greater good. 
We need to empty ourselves on a daily basis. Empty ourselves of the pride, privilege, and self-righteousness that we carry around. We need to exchange our desire for upward mobility for a desire for downward mobility. You see, we need to decrease the honor we seek for ourselves and increase the honor we seek for others. Honoring others in the way we live, just as Jesus did and as he does. While pride breaks relationships, we will find that our humility will build relationships, will foster their growth. In our churches, humility is expressed by concern for others. You see, humility fosters unity. The unity that Paul says will make him truly happy. The behavior that God desires of his people. That his people will be agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. The blessings of humility and unity when it come when our concern for others gets beyond our self-interest, beyond our obsession with achievements, beyond our self-obsessing about guilt over our failures. It gets us beyond ourself until we finally reach the point, the point where each of us can humbly acknowledge that it is not our working, but God who is working in us, giving us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. To God be the glory and all praise and honor forever. Amen. And from a foundation of humility, let us now think of others here as we share our joys and our concerns. Um, we are happy indeed for and congratulate the Squirt family on the birth of Reese. Now, I don't know if my count is correct, but I think that is your seventh grandson. Is that correct? Oh, we had to stop and count. Okay, out of nine grandchildren. Yes, very impressive, and what a blessing. Uh, so our congratulations to them. Okay, now I have to be careful not to do this out of pride, but this morning I was texted that we don't have any more grandsons to compete like we did last time, but my great-niece gave birth, and this is my niece who battled aggressive, very aggressive breast cancer at age 24, we praise God, her ovaries woke up, and that she just gave birth to her second uh, son. So we are indeed overjoyed um, at that blessing. So the blessing of life and birth, it's awesome. Uh, Debbie has a joy to share. The softball team, tell me again, Debbie. Fourth place. Got fourth place. Yeah. Out of eight teams, okay. So it is a joy, and, and we celebrate, yes, the unity that comes with a softball team pulling together. October 1st, this week, Debbie gets to visit her husband, so prayers for that reunion. E even though, she, as Debbie shared, it's very difficult to have a reunion when you can't, you know, express affection. So, yes. Yes, so we share that joy with you and are so happy that you'll be able to see Bill. Okay, um, I had the joy this week of chatting with Diane Ash and hearing about their upcoming move to Sugar Grove. Uh, we pray for this time of transition um, 
And, but we are really thankful that indeed Sugar Grove is drivable to all of us. So, joy to share with them. Uh, prayers for uh, Bill and Jane Ryan's son, Bill, who's been uh, assigned as a crew chief uh, fighting fires in the Oregon, Washington area. So, uh, our prayers as they might move him around at any time and... Yeah, what a scary thing. So for all the firefighters out there as they work to um, extinguish those fires. And also we pray for the continued healing for John Clenny and Bill Mobes. So I am sure you have other um, joys and concerns on your mind. Let us all, oops, Debbie, yes. Okay, Woodbury School and cases of coronavirus. And, you know, that is, yes, a prayer. How these schools are trying to function um, is such a huge challenge to staff and to children and parents. Um, so our prayers with them as well. Let us come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Almighty God, you hear our cries and are ever faithful in your mercy. We come to you with our concern for ourselves, our community, and the world. For our church and its leaders, fill them with the spirit and mind of Christ so that they would serve you and others. We pray, Lord, especially for our pastor search committee and for the future of this church. We pray for our country, Lord, and our global community. Enable our leaders, Lord, to make decisions with humility for the sake of people and not prophets, to serve others and not themselves. We pray, Lord, for people recovering from fires and hurricanes, for the first responders and firefighters, for Bill and his leadership and safety in battling the fires. We pray, Lord, for our local community, for those impacted directly and indirectly by the coronavirus, its impact on our health, our mental health, our schools, our jobs, and our economy. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer with sickness, sadness, bereavement, anxiety, or abuse. Envelop them, O oh Lord, in your love and help us to be their community. May your healing hand be upon Bill and John and others recovering or battling for their health and well-being. We pray for those grieving and we pray for the other intentions that we hold now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, we know that you walk with us and you answer when we call. With gratitude and trust, Lord, now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. God has blessed us beyond measure. So with grateful hearts, we offer our gifts, trusting in God's goodness. You may leave your gifts in the offering plates by the door. You may put them in the mail to us, or you may give electronically. Now in thanksgiving, let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise you for the love you have shown us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Accept the offering of our lives in union with Christ's offering for us and make us humble and obedient servants who will work for your good pleasure. Through Christ, with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. the depths I cry to you. In darkest places I will call. Incline your ear to me anew and hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? Yet full forgiveness meets my case. I stand redeemed by grace alone. I will wait for you. I will wait for you on your word. I will rely. I will wait for you. Surely wait for you till my soul is satisfied. working hard to show the results of your salvation. Walk in the humble steps of Jesus Christ and empty yourselves of pride, showing concern for others. And may you delight in the love of God and be inspired by the humility of Jesus Christ. And may the power of the Holy Spirit give you courage now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>